Good morning, good morning. How are you today? You look well. Look at those smiling faces. My goodness. What a handsome group. We are excited to be here. Uh, excited to be in Dandenong. And um, as Pastor Frank has said, we just spent the last three years in Limbrook. We were sad to leave Limbrook, uh, knowing that we're only leaving on Sunday mornings. And that the great thing about One Church in four locations is that you can continue to maintain friendships and relationships. Uh, it's one of the great things about being One Church in four locations. But we're excited about being here and being part of this church family as well. And um, excited about what it is that God wants to do. Now, there are some 2,000 odd people uh, who call the Dan on campus their home. We don't get 2,000 people in the building every weekend, uh, obviously. But there are some 2,000 people. So if I don't remember your name, please extend grace. Oh, I'd really appreciate that because uh, my goal is to get to know people. Uh, we want to be part of church family. So it's not just about, you know, rocking up to church. It's actually about engaging with people. So um, uh, I, we will do our best. Sarah's not great with names. Um, sometimes she forgets mine. And... Uh, and I'm only a little bit better, but uh, we still actually want to get to know people and engage with people. So I, I may actually ask you again and then again, just, just cut us a little bit of slack um, because we actually do want to get to know you and get to know your names. That'll be great. We're excited about being here. Also excited about uh, today being the launch of our 21 days of prayer and fasting. That's fantastic. That's very, very cool. Looking very much forward to that. Uh, I, I do think that fasting has become a little bit of a lost art. You know, a bit of, a bit of kind of one of those things that I know in the 70s and 80s and uh, maybe the 90s, uh, you know, fasting really kind of hit its peak and everybody was fasting and it was, you know, it was almost a, a challenge kind of thing. And then in church life, it kind of, you know, ebbs and flows, kind of how it normally does. And I do think that uh, fasting has become a little bit of a lost art. It's not altogether unexpected. We live in a world where, uh, you know, kind of instant gratification is, is, is the thing. And the whole notion of going without is a bit of an absurdity. And especially choosing to go without. Like, why would you choose not to eat food? This is Melbourne. What are you, insane? <laughs> Everything we do is around food. So there's, it's kind of a, you know, a little bit of a, a strange idea to go without something and particularly to choose to go without something. Delayed gratification is not exactly a hallmark of this generation. It's just not our thing as a general rule. And so the whole thought of fasting really is something that over time can easily and quickly get lost. This morning, I don't have the time to do an in-depth analysis of fasting. Fasting uh, is a huge topic and uh, has so many facets to it. But what I do want to do is I, I do want to take a little bit of time to hone in on maybe a, a couple of the key elements of fasting. Because I think if we want our prayer and fasting be as, to be as effective as God wants it to be, we're not just doing this because we're bored. We're doing this because we want to come before God and we believe that God calls us into this space and wants to do something in and through us in this time. And so if we really want to achieve everything that God has for us, then I just want to kind of hit on a few key elements of fasting to help us step into everything that God has for us. Does that sound all right? So today what we're going to do is we're going to look at the heart behind the fast. The heart behind the fast. You know, if you read through your Bible and even look at history, God has done some significant things I would say, history-altering things as a result of fasting. But have you ever wondered why? What is it that makes God respond to fasting? Like, why would we bother doing it? What is it that God looks and says, oh, look, they're fasting. Oh, I'm going to do something. Could it be that God, who is a God of love, looks and says to himself, oh my goodness, Alex is going to starve to death. I'd better quit, give him what he wants. <laughs> I'm guessing that's not the reason. Could it be that God who is father, you know, God's a parent. Hey, you know, when Caitlin was young, 
You know, the whole trip into the supermarket and the whole throwing a tantrum on the supermarket floor. What do parents do? Quick, get that chocolate. What did you want? Here, have it. Be quiet, be quiet. Is this not a shared experience? Has, has any other parent done that ever? Either you are liars or I am in real trouble. <laughs> Maybe God, who is parent, who is father, says, oh my goodness, quick, just keep Alex quiet. Let's give him, give him what he wants just to keep him quiet. I, I don't think that's the reason. Could it be because God loves to see us punish our flesh? <laughs> that's not the Jesus I read about in the Bible. That's, that's not the Jesus I read in the Gospels. It's none of those reasons. God doesn't respond to fasting for any of that. Fasting is not twisting God's arm. It's not some supernatural temper tantrum that God has to respond to. Fasting is not a hunger strike against God. God, if I'm, I'm, I'm not going to eat until you give me what I want. I'm going to stamp my feet. I'm going to hold my breath. I'm going to stop eating until you do what I want. That, it's not a... It's not a hunger strike against God. The truth is that God doesn't need our fasting. The truth is we need fasting. That's how it works. God doesn't need it, we do. And the reason for that is because fasting helps us put our life back in perspective. It helps us to understand who we really are and how we really operate. It reminds us we are not just a physical body with physical needs. We're more than that. You are a spirit being covered in flesh. You are spirit, soul and body. And that, that spirit part of you sometimes needs to be refocused on God because the physical part, life, work, family, the world around us, circumstance, just seems to crowd in and obscure our vision of who God is. And sometimes that, that, that spirit part just needs to be refocused. See, fasting is both a physical activity as well as a spiritual activity. And if we're going to get the most out of it, we need to approach it in that way. Because it's not just about abstaining from food or from TV or from whatever it is that you're fasting. It's, it's far more than that. It's about engaging with God in prayer and works. See, fasting without prayer, <laughs> it's just a bad weight loss program. Fasting without prayer is a bad diet. I'll tell you, it's just a bad idea. That's not what fasting is about. Now, we see in the Bible how fasting was used to seek after God. And we see it over and over again in Second Chronicles. We see Jehoshaphat seeking God for help as this army is bearing down upon him. We see him crying out to God with fasting for God to intervene in this circumstance, a circumstance that he could not prevent. Can I suggest to you, church, that if there's a, a situation that, that is bigger than you, if there's a circumstance that you need help in that you can't do on your own, you have access to the weapon of fasting. If there's something happening in your family, if there's something happening in, 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 your, in your marriage, maybe your, your spouse is away from God or your children are away from God, you have access to the weapon of fasting. You can seek God for help. You can, you can cry out to God and ask him to come and be part of that situation. If your business is going through a tough space, you can cry out to God and say, God, I, I need you to intervene in this circumstance. I need creative ideas. I need new avenues. I need more sales. I need you to come into this space and do something. You have access to the weapon of fasting. But not just seeking God for help. Fasting does move the hand of God, but it does more than that. We see in Acts chapter 13, the apostles are fasting and praying and seeking God for guidance. And then God speaks to them and says, set apart for me, Paul and Barnabas, to the work that I have for them. That was a history changing event. Paul and Barnabas go out. If it wasn't for that event, if it wasn't for these guys fasting and praying, we probably wouldn't have two thirds of the New Testament. 
Paul goes off and he goes to all these different churches and then he starts writing letters back to the churches. We read them now. They're our Bible. It's a a history-changing event. Seeking God for guidance. You've got decisions coming that you need to make. Stuff that will affect your future. Stuff that will affect your career. Stuff that will affect your family or your business. You can prevail upon God. You have access to the weapon of fasting. You can prevail upon God. I need you to speak to me. Does it make sense? But if we're going to engage fasting as God intended it, for all of that to happen, we have to ask ourselves the question, what should be the spirit behind our fasting? What is the heart behind the fast? Fasting can be used in so many different ways. So many different circumstances. But the overriding spirit of fasting is twofold. It is persistence and humility. Fasting is persistence and humility. I don't have time to to kind of unpack both of those, so I'm going to hone in on one of them. And today I'm going to hone in on humility. Fasting and humility. You know, you read anywhere in the Bible about fasting and you will see it's almost a conjoined twin with prayer. And they fasted and prayed. Then they gathered together to pray and fast. Like you'll be lucky to find, and I haven't found one, but I'm leaving myself a caveat just in case someone does. You'll be lucky to find any instance of fasting without prayer. Because fasting and prayer always went together which should be no surprise because prayer like fasting is about humbling ourselves before God that's what prayer is all about see when you pray what you're saying whether you're praying for a specific issue or you're just praying in general in your life like in you know morning devotions or evening devotions or whatever you do when you pray you're saying to God I need you to intervene in this circumstance I mean, you don't pray to somebody who can't help. <laughs> what would the point of that be? So you pray, and in your prayer, you're saying, God, I need you to work in my family, in my job, in my health, in my emotions, in my, in my pain. I need you to come and I need you to intervene. I need you to do something. It's an acknowledgement that you need God. Prayer says, I can't make this thing happen on my own. Prayer reminds us that we need Him in order to see this stuff come to pass. Does that make sense? That's the nature of prayer. In fact, let me say this. When you do not pray, when you choose not to, I'm too busy to pray. I don't have time. I can't get up at that time in the morning. I can't stay up that late at night. I don't, I just don't. When you choose not to pray, what you're saying is, Jesus, the Bible tells us the earth is your footstool. Put your feet up. I got this. I got this one. Jesus, you're a busy kind of guy and I don't want you to get too busy. So I'll tell you what, you just take it easy because I can handle this one. I don't need to ask you to be part of this process. I don't need to involve you in what it is that's going on right now because I can handle it. Does it make sense? That's what, we, that's what we communicate when we don't pray. What we're effectively saying is, I've got this on my own, Jesus I don't need you. I've got it under control. Fasting moves the hand of God because God responds to humility. Prayer moves the hand of God because God responds to humility. Let me throw some scriptures to you. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5 and 6 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. James 4, 6 says, God opposes the proud, but shows favour to the... Oh, that's very, very good. Let's try it again. God opposes the proud, but shows favour to the... Humble. Humble. 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Matthew 18, 4, whoever will... Humble himself like this child is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 23, verse 12, those who humble themselves will be exalted. Hey, can, can you see the pattern starting to emerge, church? Can you see this kind of a, a common thread through all of this? God 
responds to humility. And it's not just, hey, be humble. It's those who humble themselves will be exalted. So to start with, it's actually about us humbling ourselves. It's not about you being humbled or being humiliated. It's about us making a choice. I will humble myself. I acknowledge God. I need you. That shouldn't be that hard to acknowledge. I need you. And when we do that, the Bible tells us that as we humble ourselves, well, it goes on and says, we'll be the greatest, we'll be exalted, we'll be healed, there will be favour shown. Like in each of these scriptures, there's a response of God to that choice to humble ourselves. Makes sense. When we humble ourselves, it moves the hand of God. This is why God responds to fasting. Because we've chosen to humble ourselves. See, God isn't just interested in you just not eating. He's not interested in you just not watching TV or whatever it is that you're choosing to abstain from. God is interested in your heart. Above all else, he's interested in my heart. That's why in Joel chapter 2, verse 13, many of you would be familiar with this. God says to his people, rend your hearts and not your garments. I learned that in the New King James Version. Maybe it was the Old King James Version. Whatever version it was, that's the version I learned it in. But if you read it in the New American Standard, it says, tear your heart and not merely your garments. See, back in the Old Testament in those days, people would tear their clothes and it would be a sign of loss. So if somebody died, they'd tear their clothes. It'd be a sign of loss. In fact, one of the greatest insults a parent could do is in disowning a child, they would tear their garments and say, you're dead to me. You're dead to me. And the symbol for that, they'd tear their clothes because the tearing of the garment was a symbol of loss. It was a symbol of mourning. It was a symbol of grief. It was a symbol of, I am not in control of what is going on and I humble myself as a result of that. And so when, when God comes and says to his people, tear your hearts and not just your garments, what he's saying is, I don't want some outward show of humility. Don't bore me with that outward show of humility. I want the real deal. I want your heart to be humble before me. I want you to come before me with in, in you know, worshipping and in spirit and in truth, not, not in form or in ceremony, but I want you to come before me and say, you know what? I'm, I know I need you. I choose to humble myself because I know I need you. God is interested in where our heart is at. In all of our situations, whether we're fasting and praying corporately as a church, which we're about to step into for the next 21 days, or whether you're fasting and praying for specific instances in your own personal life, whatever that is, we come with humility and persistence. That's how we are to approach fasting. Having the humility to know our limitations. I remember once somebody going through a particularly difficult time in my life and this very uh, empathetic, uh, compassionate person says to me, you know there is a God and you're not it. <laughs> oh, ooh, okay, wow. Well, I appreciate that, thank you. You can't say that to me. I'm a pastor. <laughs> you know there's a God, you're not him. It's coming before God with a humility that says, you know what, I'm not in control. I know my limitations. I'm not in control. And half the time that I think I am, it's an illusion. Because it makes me feel better. (laughs) It's that humility that says, no, I'm not. God, you're in control. And I humble myself before you. And it's that persistence that says, you know what, I know that you can move in this situation. I'm going to keep believing you until you do. I'm going to keep pressing into you until you do. In our time of fasting over these next 21 days, there's a number of different areas that we're believing God to work in. We want to see God move in in numbers of different spaces. We're looking for breakthrough in vision. We're believing God over these next 21 days. There'll be breakthrough in vision, not just corporately, but for you personally. Some of you, you just need to hear from God. 
You need to hear from God for your future. You need to hear from God for, for uh, work situations or life situations or, or home situations. Some of you, God, do I have a partner? Is there someone you have for me, a, a husband, a wife? You need vision. You, you need God to speak into your life and to speak into your circumstance. We are fasting and praying for breakthrough in that area that there will be vision, that you will come out of that, that 21 days with a sense of, I feel like God has spoken to me. That's what, that's what we're fasting for. We're fasting for breakthrough in the area of our new facilities. You know, right now, the, the building at Casey, it's gone into council, it's come out of council, it's gone into council, it's come out, it's, it's done the hokey pokey. Okay, this thing's going to turn around at no time. No, no time it'll turn around, I'm sure of it. But it's, it's just gone back into council. And we're, we've gone back with answering more questions and we're believing for a breakthrough in that area, that they're going to come back and say, you know what, we love it, go for it. But we're not going to be... I've talked to other churches in that area and some of them have said, we've been fighting with council for four years now. All we want to do is a reno. We've been fighting for four years. We're believing for breakthrough in that area. God, we need you to come through. The, the building out at Waverley right now, you know, that's, that's getting closer. We are, we are almost at the point of sending it out for tender. Well, we're believing for breakthrough in a good price. We're believing for breakthrough in the right, uh, the right contractor for the right builder. We are believing for breakthrough in that space. We're believing for breakthrough in our, in our whole legacy build. We're believing for breakthrough in finances. Because let's face it, Casey's not going to build itself. And Waverley's not going to refurbish itself. It's just not, it doesn't work that way. So we're believing for a breakthrough corporately in our finances. But we're believing for a breakthrough in your finances. Because we know there are people who have, over the last 12 months, some of you have lost your job. Some of you are, are having to rebuild your finances because it's been a, a struggle over the last 12 months. And we're believing for a breakthrough in that area of your life, that you would see a breakthrough in finances. Above all of this, we're believing for a breakthrough in personal revival. 2021 is the year of personal revival. It's our vision for this year given to us by God because He wants to see us step into that place of no longer being wearied and no longer being beaten about the head by circumstance, but actually having that personal revival that God comes and breathes, breathes life, breathes refreshing, breathes that rejuvenation into your spirit. We are believing for breakthrough in personal revival. That this next three weeks as we fast and we pray that you'll get a revelation of Jesus that you have not had before. Amen. We're believing for breakthrough in these areas. And if you haven't picked it, the common thread through that is we're not just fasting for something generic. We're not just fasting for something to happen. We are fasting for something specific and that is we are fasting for breakthrough. And the reason is because fasting is a weapon of breakthrough. There are defensive weapons like the shield of faith. There are offensive weapons like the sword of the spirit. And there are breakthrough weapons like fasting. It's a weapon of breakthrough and we are believing for breakthrough. As we fast, we come and we humble ourselves. And in doing so, we exercise faith that we believe God is the one who can intervene in that situation. God is the one who can intervene in your family. That spouse that doesn't know Jesus, that child that's away from God, that friend that you've been praying for and believing that they'd come to a, a revelation knowledge of Jesus, we believe God can intervene in that. That financial situation, that health situation, that family breakdown, that, 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 that uh, uh, reconciliation that's needed with your sister. We're believing God to bring breakthrough in these. We believe God has the ability to do something Supernatural in those spaces, yeah? Amen. That's the God we serve, right? That's the God we serve. This whole concept works equally, whether it's a corporate fast like we're about to step into or a personal one. You can use this weapon of fasting, this weapon of breakthrough in your own personal life and see God, see God come through in those situations. Anywhere you need faith exercised to see God come through miraculously you can use the weapon of fasting. So before we close, what I want to do is give you three things that I think would be helpful for you as we step into fasting. As we step into this next three weeks, this next season of fasting. Three things that I have learned from painful experience. Three things that I have learned from being stupid and just making my own mistakes. 
Three things that I have noticed in other people's lives. I just want to throw these to you because we don't just, we don't just say, okay, let's have a time of prayer and fasting because it's what we do every year. Well, it's not because we're bored. You know, hey, let's not eat for three weeks. That's a great idea. What staff meeting ever came up with that concept? That's not why we do it. We are stepping into this place of prayer and fasting because we want to see breakthrough in your life, in your life. When I say the life of our church, I'm very careful to split it up to corporate and individual because we are the church. So when we're talking about breakthrough in our lives, we're talking breakthrough in your life too. In our church, we're talking about your life. So I want to just throw these to you because I feel like sometimes we don't see the breakthrough because sometimes we lose heart. We lose heart and we don't understand what it is that's happening around us. We don't understand. And so because of that, we quit. Not because we're weak. Not because you're unable. But simply because if we could see it with our real eyes, our, our real eyes, our physical eyes, then we'd be like, oh, I know God's doing something. I'm going to keep going. But because we can't, we back off. Does that make sense? So let me throw these to you. Number one, you may not see the breakthrough immediately, but it is coming. If, if you just write that one on your mirror, it will carry you through the whole three weeks. You may not see the breakthrough immediately, but it is coming. In Daniel chapter 10, we see Daniel uh, goes on a 21 day fast. He starts calling out to God. And after he finishes his 21-day fast, an angel appears to him. And the angel says to him, Daniel, from the moment you started praying, from the very beginning of your time of prayer and fasting, I started coming. But it took me this long to get to you. I kind of got waylaid on the way and and I even needed some help. But, But you need to know, from the moment you started praying, I started coming. We need to hold on in faith that God is bringing the breakthrough even though we don't see it yet. We don't see it yet. It may not come during the fast. In fact, there are many who believe that uh, this angel appeared to Daniel well after the fast was finished. That it wasn't just 21 days. Oh, look, here's the angel. It was 21 days and then there was a period of time and then the angel appeared. It may not come within that 21 days of fasting. But it will come. Because your persistence and your humility have set the wheels in motion. And so the wheels of breakthrough have started turning. You know, I met people who, um, and I just bless them, um, who come to me and say, I love fasting. (laughs) Okay, that's good. Because... When I fast, man, I get revelation. The Word of God just pops off the page. I just, I have visions. Angels go about my room. Like, I love it because God just speaks to me when I fast. And I'm like, that's just so awesome. I'm just so happy for you. Because personally, when I fast, all I get is hungry (laughs) and grumpy. I get grumpy as well. My wife keeps reminding me, you get grumpy when you fast. So when I fast, I get hungry and grumpy and these guys get revelations and spirit, uh, you know, like spirit of God touching them and, and, and it's just fantastic. But when I finish fasting, I don't know why it is. It's just how it works for me personally. And it's different for everyone, I get it. When I finish fasting, then I start to get revelations. Maybe the fog, the brain fog of fasting lifts. I don't know what it is, but afterwards, man, I start to get creative ideas. I start to get innovative ideas. I'm looking forward to this 21 days. I'm looking forward to the end of the 21 days because at the other end of the 21 days, I'm believing God to give us creative ideas around the financing of our buildings. I'm looking for God to give us creative ideas on how it is that we can, uh, we can move our bank into a place where they want to throw more cash at us. I'm looking for uh, God for creative ideas on how we can engage our community in a stronger way. I'm looking to God. I don't, know, I don't have those ideas, but God does. And I'm believing for breakthrough in that stuff. It may not come in the 21 days, but you have set the wheels in motion for breakthrough in your life. 
Number two, we have to resist the temptation to let our faith begin to fail. It's so easy for our, in the middle of a fast for your, your faith just to start to flag, your faith just to start to, your hope start to flag. You know, Paul tells us in Galatians 6, 9, let us not become weary in doing good. You know why he says, let us not become weary in doing good? Because doing good stuff is wearying. You keep doing the right stuff. Keep doing it. Keep doing good things. Keep going. Keep going. You get kicked every now and then. It doesn't, doesn't bear the fruit that you were hoping it would bear every now and then. It can be wearying. Paul knows that. He'd been doing good for a long time. And so he says to the, the church in Galatia, hey, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. If we do not give up. It's too easy, I know, in my own life, it's too easy to get that k sera sera attitude. Come on, how many, how many of you know who Doris Day is? Give me a wave. Come on. There's four of you. Are you for real? If you know who Doris Day is, give me a comment. Kesara, sura. Whatever will be, will be. The future's not as to see. Kesara, sura. I don't want you to clap. I want you to sing. Because I'll guarantee everyone under 40 just looking at me like, who on earth is Doris Day? Kesara sara means whatever will be, will be. It's too easy to get that attitude in fasting. You know, if God wants to bring breakthrough, then He will. He doesn't need me to fast. If God wants to bring blessing, then He will. If God wants to bring revelation, if He wants to bring personal role, then He will. But that's not how it works. God has, has given you a weapon. He's put it in your hands. God has given you an opportunity to be a, a partaker of the divine nature. You have the ability to influence eternity. Wow. I wouldn't trust you or me. Why on earth does God? He's put this in your hands. He said, you know what? You're going to be part of the miracle. You will get to be part of the miracle. It's not K sera sera. It's not, well, you know, if God wants it to happen, then it will happen. It, it's, it's not some fatalistic approach. It's God has put this tool in my hand in order that I can partner with Him as I humble myself before Him and be a part of the miracle He wants to bring to pass. We need to be praying in faith, knowing that breakthrough is occurring, even if we can't quite see it yet. Let me just tell you what helps me a lot. Whenever I fast, I, I create a mental picture. It's not a vision. It's not given to me by God. It's me creating a mental picture. It's a picture of a damn wall. And every time I pray, I just imagine... Another crack in the wall. Every time I miss a meal, another crack in the wall. Every time I humble myself before God, another crack in the wall. Every time I say I'm not going to watch TV, I'm going to read my Bible, another crack in the wall. I just envisage it. I just, in my mind, I picture this wall. It's from the movie Dam Busters. It's something else that nobody under 40 will remember. This damn wall, and, and every time I pray, another crack, another crack, another crack. And I just see it, and it helps me. It motivates me because I'm a visual person. It motivates me to keep going. It's okay if I keep going. That, that crack eventually, look, I can see it. One crack is actually joining with the next. And eventually that thing's going to go, and the blessing of God, the breakthrough of God is going to flood out all over me. Everything He's called us to see. Whatever you need to do to stay motivated, whether it's a mental image like that, whether it's getting together with others and praying, whatever it is, just understand, bam, another crack in the wall. You're one step closer. You may not see it now, but let's not let our faith fall. Let's keep pushing, keep pushing until we see something happen. The last one. Remember that breakthrough comes because of our attitude and not just because of the fasting. 
It's a bit of a weird one, I know, but kind of go with me on this. Because I just found this in my own life to be so important. (laughs) Don't get caught in the super spirituality trap. Some of you know what I mean. Because some of you have been in that space. When I was a younger Christian, ah, when I was younger, so much younger than today. When I was a younger Christian, I got caught in this trap numbers of times. It's kind of where you look and you think, oh, what's that, Ramon? You're fasting television. (laughs) I'm fasting food. You know, like a real fast. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good. That's good. Good for you. eh? Yeah, if that's where you're at, that's fantastic. Yeah, it's good. Anthony, did you say you're fasting one one meal a day? One whole meal. Really? One whole meal? Is that the whole meal or do you still get dessert or what? Like... Yeah, oh, okay, just the food. You still get the dessert. Fantastic. Well, I'm sure God will bless that, no doubt. That's awesome. It's very, very good. Yeah. No, no, I'm fasting food. I'm only drinking water. In fact, I'm drinking tap water. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Now, what have I just done? What have you done? What have I just done? If fasting is all about humbling ourselves... I've just undercut all of that. And all of a sudden now, it's not about humbling myself. It's about, look at me. Look at me. How good am I? See how good I am? I'm fasting everything. Jesus talked about the Pharisees who did that in Matthew chapter 6. In fact, what they would do is they would not even wash their face. They'd wear haggard clothing. They'd scrub up their hair so that when somebody came up and said, oh, Bronte, you don't look so good. I'm fasting because I'm fasting. I know it's, a, it's just a price I pay for fasting because I'm so close to God, just so holy. Don't get caught in the super spirituality trap. It's a trap. It completely defeats the purpose of humbling ourselves. Fasting is not a competition. Fasting, and I used to think it was, is not a test of your will. It's a test of strength. Can I make it through? I'm hungry, but I'm going to keep going and I'm not going to eat anything. Look, it's good to keep pushing through. I'm not saying don't do that. But if you fall, if you fail, don't, like I would, go, oh, well, I've blown it now. I might as well eat a whole cake. (laughs) It's the end of the fast now. It's fine. I'm going to eat everything I can find and I'll fix it all tomorrow. Don't do that. Come before God and say, look, God, I've just worked out. I can't even fast without your help. Use it as an opportunity to humble yourself a little bit more. Oh God, I can't even fast without you. I can't even go without TV. I can't even go without I can't even go without something without your help. It's about humbling ourselves. She's been playing a long time. I should wrap this up, hey. <laughs> Loving your work, buddy. In the end, we need to remember two key points about fasting. Number one. Fasting is about humbling ourselves. Humbling ourselves before God and prevailing upon Him to move powerfully. And number two, fasting is a tool of breakthrough. We need to hold fast in faith to see God bring breakthrough in our church and in our lives. Over the next three weeks, this next 21 days, we're about to step into this time of prayer and fasting. I want to challenge you. Why don't you push yourself just a little? Maybe you've never engaged in the, we've been doing this for years. Maybe you've never engaged in the 21 days of prayer and fasting. Why don't you pick something to fast? Some of you have come in here and you've been preparing for this for four weeks. You've been praying, you've been seeking God. Some of you have done a pre-fast fast. Like you've just, like you've gone all out. And some of us have walked in there like, fasting? We're fasting? Oh, what, what, what is that? All right. Well, that's okay. I'm not having to go at you. Don't, that's fine. I'm saying you're here now. You're here. So why don't we think about it now? Why don't you take some time to think, you know what, I'm going to stretch myself just a little. This week I'm going to to start, I'm going to fast something. Why don't you get involved in the time of prayer and fasting? Whether you're doing a full fast, nothing but water. Whether you're doing a Daniel fast, only fruit and vegetables. Maybe you're doing a partial fast, you're eating one meal a day or, or you're skipping one meal a day. 
Maybe you're fasting certain foods, like I'm not going to eat chocolate, I'm going to do desserts, I'm not going to have luxury items. Maybe you're fasting certain activities. I'm not going to watch TV. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do social media. I'm telling you, for some of us, if you fasted TV or social media and you spent that time praying, by the end of three weeks, your face would glow like Moses. Because of the amount of time some of us watch TV or flip through Facebook. Just saying. Whatever it is that you're choosing, can I encourage you to stretch yourself a little? Stretch yourself a little. Make sure you take that time and you spend it in prayer. Don't just not eat. Not eat, but then, then go for a walk and pray at that time. Just read your Bible at that time. Engage God. Humble yourself before God in the midst of that time, seeking Him for guidance, seeking Him for breakthrough. Over this next 21 days, we also have a 21-day devotion that we're doing together. Isn't this a nice-looking book, Ramon? Do you like it? It's very flash. Do you know it's free? I know. You were going to pay for it, weren't you? I should have said nothing. I'm the GM. I should have said nothing. It's free. We want to give it to you because we want you to be a part of us as a church praying and fasting. We don't want to be a church that prays and fasts. We want to be a church that prays and fasts together. We want to do this together. And this helps us on the journey together because we're all reading the same scriptures, going through the same devotions. We're all on the same page at the same time. So can I encourage you, you can grab one of these uh, on your way out at the exits in the foyer. There might be people standing there with them in their hands. Just grab it off them. We would love to give you one that you would be able to join with us and we could fast together. You may not be a reading, writing kind of person. Maybe you're more of a visual person. That's great. On Instagram and on Facebook, we are actually going to be having our devotions uh, live. Well, recorded live, you know. They're going to be on Instagram and Facebook. And so these devotions will be, a condensed version will be on, uh, on our social media. So you can join in there. If you're not a reading, writing kind of person, you can join in there. Maybe you want to do both. Feel free. That'd be great. Do both. Can I encourage you this next 21 days? Join with us. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. You might have a reading plan that you already have and it's got dates on it and everything and you don't want to mess up the spreadsheet. I'm with you. I'm a spreadsheet kind of guy. Well, that's okay. Maybe maybe do this one in the morning and that one at night. So your spreadsheet still satisfies, but you just spend that little bit more time with Jesus. Does it make sense? Maybe if if, if the spreadsheet thing's not going to hassle you out, you can kind of push it for three weeks and do this instead. But we just want to do it together. Does that sound all right? That would be fabulous.